Hello and welcome to Spin TV's coverage of the 2019 European Open presented by Innova Disc Golf. We are in Nokia, Finland. Big Sexy Commentary, Nate Sexton and Jeremy Colling. Big Sexy Commentary, a.k.a. Esau Sexy Cuss. Finish for Big Sexy. Get That's right. that in your brain. That's right, baby. We have got a great feature card coming up for round one. Paul Macbeth, four-time world champion, four-time European Open champion. And defending Eagle McMahon. Kevin Jones, the Estonian Open champion, he's one for one in international tournaments. Simon Lazat does not have the same ratio for international tournaments, but it's kind of hard because he is an international. Hole one, par three, 301 feet, 92 meters. I'm going to do the meters first here, folks, because we are in Finland, out of respect. This one is a triple mandatory. You've got to navigate off the tee. Then you've got this secondary gap. Then it starts to go a little downhill and left. There is a bit of a little cliff behind the pin. Mid-range or putter, just kind of a soft backhand. And the USA, Kevin Jones. <laughs> Kevin Jones, one of the more prominent putter throwers on tour. He'll definitely be going with a PA3 here. Neither lion able to get its teeth into that one. And that is coming up very nice. Representing Team Discmania and Germany, Simon Lizard. Simon Lizard going with a Sky God, I believe. Also going with a putter. This is very straight. Not going to have the same stability and a little bit slow to, or a little bit low. Didn't quite get the distance he needed. Team Discmania and the USA, Eagle McMahon. Eagle McMahon throwing... Um, also going with the putter. I think it's that Tiger Warrior. Yeah, the Tiger Warrior. He really likes this thing. And this is a little inside. If it can miss these trees here, it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. That's a bullseye shot for Eagle. That is perfect. Representing Team Discraft and the USA, Paul McBeth. And it looks like Paul has a buzz in his hand, and he always likes to throw a little bit softer, more touchy mid-range shots for these kind of floaters. And this is moving in pretty quick. If this can slow down, this will be a really good shot. Oh, yeah, that's Perfect. great. Simon up first. Call it 15 meters. Oh, wow. Look at that. I love the little fist pump when you know it's going in, even before it gets to the chains. What a great way to start the tournament off for Simon. A bit of a scary putt, too, going down the hill. Mm -hmm. It gets really quick behind the basket. And Oh, Kevin Jones. A little high and off to the left, and he'll have to settle for the par, but Macbeth and Eagle are going to pick up their birdies and get off to the start that you really want in this hold. This course has so many difficult holes. Hole one is not difficult, but it is a little nervy. Here we are on hole two, par three, after a short walk from our players over to the tee area. This one is 380 feet. Oh, shoot, I did feet first. 116 <laughs> meters. I will get that right. There is OB down the left side the entire way. There's OB on the right as well on that fence line. Forehand is a popular play. Turnover mid-range. Some players even go roller here. Yeah, roller is a good play. You can see that the, the crowd is backed off about five or six meters off the OB line, which is important for that roller. I don't think we're going to see any rollers from this group as all four players have really good forehands. And you see Simon, probably the player who throws the least forehands out of this bunch. Mm -hmm. He goes with a forehand off the tee. And Eagle just thrown is so soft here. 20% probably. <laughs> you know, it's like unbelievable. <laughs> Perfect. Right. We're going to hit some metal. <laughs> That's incredible. How's that? How you guys like this for a Thursday afternoon crowd? This is this has got to break a record for first day attendance at a major. I've never seen anything like this. This is like this almost feels like Saturday at USDGC. It's awesome. And another one in the circle. Paul puts it in there quite easily with a little forehand skip. Kevin Jones, one day after an incredible President's Cup debut for him. Another shot inside the circle. Beautiful shots from the entire wow. card. Oh, Simon knew that was mm. off left. And 
Oh, low, but in. Not worried about that one. It's in the basket. And Kevin played 15 holes in the President's Cup yesterday, and his match play his match play match only made it uh, six holes, and he birdied 13 of the 15 holes he played. Two pars. He was an unstoppable force. It was an incredible performance, and it was really what elevated the United States to their win in the President's Cup. The Euro Team Europe probably brought the most impressive performance to date of the eight President's Cups, and it was a, an incredible match. If you if you can ever come out to the President's Cup, make sure you do so in the future. Hole three, our only par five, 263 meters, 863 feet. OB down the left and right sides, pinching to very narrow mid fairway. Players are going to go short of that pinch point and then go with a long backhand, try to skip it up under these trees, getting left if possible to avoid all the trees on the approach. These guys, I think, will have a very simple third shot if they execute mm -hmm. their game plan. Yeah, and this hole had a very prominent tree taken away. Like You can kind of see the dead grass there. That's about where the tree was before, and it really made the players choose if they are going to go the inside line backhand or the outside line sidearm. But now that the fairway pinches so much, I feel it. It you know the 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 challenge of that tree is kind of balanced out by sure. the fact that you can you can't even afford to be as aggressive as you used to maybe be able to. Right, and it, it does make it a little bit easier off the tee, um, as far as open space. But um, with that pinch point, like you're talking about, it definitely keeps the players honest and requires a really good accurate tee shot, like you see these three shots so far. The hole is still averaging over par at 5.18. Still has its teeth out here. Simon going with the lone backhand. Turnover mid-range. All right into the exact same landing zone as the rest of the players. Look at that. Look at that grouping right there. That's perfect. That's where you want to land it. Mm-hmm. This just needs to get through these branches. Should be... Uh, he's going to be behind a little wall. He's in bounds. Mm -hmm. I think he kicked off a little bit to the right. I think I saw a shot live, actually. And I think that he should have a somewhat open look to the pin. This is also heading a bit left. Wow. And wow, that actually could be tricky. I don't know how far left that skipped, but it looked like he could be somewhat pinched in with the fence. This is more like it. Yeah, this is what you want. Nothing in the way for Kevin after this shot. This is a beautiful full flight. Good skip. That's right about 120 feet, maybe 35 meters. Yeah. And Simon going to get even closer if he can get a left finish. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it makes this hole a lot easier if you can be there in two. And you can see Eagle's got a pretty wide open look, just a low ceiling. There is out of bounds pretty close behind this basket. If you crest this hill, it like gets that. there so quick, but Eagle just put the brakes on enough. Paul's going to be fine here. Wasn't, wasn't behind the fence as we feared. Oh, this is fast. Uh, yeah, and there wow, you go. Wow, he is not fine. I, got the, I blew that call. <laughs> that has gone out of bounds long. That is mm -hmm. a big mistake. And Kevin with a huge jump putt just to put it right there outside the bullseye. I'm in for the eagle. And we have seen some eagles here in the past. And this is Paul to save par. Which he's able to do. Disappointing par, though. Yeah, the, that's where you want to be after two shots. Just anywhere where the trees aren't in the way and pretty open approach. Eagle makes easy work of his birdie putt. No eagles to speak of in round one. I think the eagle may have been a little bit more accessible in the past just because you could go big off the tee. Absolutely. But it was a harder shot to go big. So now it t requires a really, really big second shot or a huge putt. I wouldn't be surprised if we go the whole tournament without seeing one three on hole five or hole three. Yeah. Hole four, par four through this very narrow gap the whole way with kind of a prevailing slope down from the right to the left. Forehand or turnover mid-range, popular plays. This is kind of the preferred landing zone where the drone is now setting up a straight shot of perhaps 70 meters down to the pin. Get yourself a little anti-skip on the forehand or keep a backhand very, very flat and you can find yourself with a nice easy putt. And 
eagle playing a really nice shot. This can avoid all the trees. That is huge. Oh yeah. That is absolutely and gigantic. A little roll. And Just that, a little roll though. Don't. Just a little roll. Don't. Oh, that's bigger than we would like to see. But he'll he, he will certainly still mm -hmm. have a play to the basket. Yeah, I, he might have a little forehand Anheuser, but that was gigantic. Oh, this is hyper aggressive from Kevin, and it's way right. This could find the road. Okay, it didn't. Mm. But yeah, wow. hard to say where that went, but uh, he definitely missed his line and uh, fortunate, I think, to be in bounds. Mm -hmm. That hillside does really slope upwards towards the road, so it, it kind of gives you a little bit of buffer for a really errant shot, mm -hmm. but those rollers can roll right up that hill quick. It's hard to skip up the hill OB with a sidearm, yeah. but it's not that hard to roll OB. And Paul going really aggressive as well. Wow, to air it so far before it starts rolling is just ludicrous. A a unbelievable shot. Wow, and look, it fought through it all. Hoover Haito, Paul McBeth. Hoover Haito. Look at this controlled roller attempt here from Simon. This is beautiful. Oh, oh. no. That was almost picture perfect. That is such a difficult shot, half mm -hmm. speed roller. Oh, yeah. and Kevin. On with the forehand, just clips the last possible thing he could have hit. Putter straight to the pin. Wow, gave that long. A, yeah, gave that a, a little bit of a run there. About eight meters past the basket. He'll have that putt back for par. So Eagle's forehand just gets to a jump putt is, is what you're telling me. Unbelievable. That's not realistic, folks. <laughs> That is so crazy. And and Macbeth's roller, of course, that's within jump putt range. Mm -hmm. He's looking for two. He's Ooh. not kidding. Oh, but look at this. This is unfortunate. Okay. Still inside the circle. That okay. could have been really bad. If that gets down to those that brush line, it's hard to almost even get a stance. Wow, Simon with a great bid. Kevin for par. Yes, count that. That's a great putt. And Paul, not phased at all by the roll, picks up the easy birdie with a great putt. Gotta have that birdie after that drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, you're seeing, that, that was a drive maybe 10 shots have ever gotten to that pre prime of a location. That was just dead center all the way as far as you're ever gonna see a drive. That was a one percenter. Yeah. Hole five, par three, 100 meters on the dot, 328 feet. This one is going downhill straight away. You can see the basket down there straight ahead. It's a really strong side hill, so forehand, uh, a driver or a backhand mid-range is a good play. I gotta do one quick shout out if you don't mind. Easiest hole in the course. There's a guy who happened to ace this. He's sitting <laughs> right next to me, the big man himself. Congratulations on a fantastic shot. Thank you, buddy. It looked a lot like this actually, just a little bit slower. That's oh. what all your forehands look like that when it's when it's up against Eagle. They all just look kind of similar, but a little slower. <laughs> exactly right. Yep. His his speed is is maybe at the likes we've never really seen. I, I've seen people that can throw it further, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone throw it as smooth and as soft and get as much distance. That was maybe an, a good tree for Paul. Looked like his putter was really drifting. Is this too low? So the problem with the overstable driver on this hill is that when you skip up that hill with a lot of angle and a lot of speed, it tends to roll down. Kevin, fortunately, was able to stay up. Oh, Simon putting a bit on it. Yes, that is a great shot. Oh, comes up a little bit short with that tree hit. And I got to give a quick shout out to Ricky Wysocki, who apparently threw the exact same line that I threw. Ooh, wow. And that was a great effort from Paul. Skipped up in chains, hit the basket and cage, and fell out. And then when he found out that I'd done the same thing but stayed in, he was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so almost as good, Ricky, but not quite. Simon with these dead Laser. putts. That is a, that's a scarier putt, way scarier than the putt on hole one. Even though it was closer, a miss there is you're 20 meters past the basket. Oh, just mm. left for Kev. Paul in for par. Oh, 
And par for McMahon. Lazat with a great birdie putt there. Giving him the only birdie on the card. Hole six, par three, 94 meters, 308 feet, slightly uphill through a very narrow gap that just kind of keeps getting narrower. Backhand mid-range or forehand driver, the prevailing plays here. You're gonna to wanna to go pretty close to this light colored tree on the left side and then bend a little bit right up into this green that's very well protected. What do you think? How many forehands, how many backhands for these guys? Oh, that's a good call. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 50-50. Okay. That's my prediction now, but I just want to comment real quick as Simon throws this and kind of gets pretty lucky through some mm -hmm. backdoor gaps, but um, this course is looking as beautiful, if not more beautiful, than it ever has before. So shout out to yeah. all the volunteers and all the people doing all the work behind the scenes. This is just one of the most picturesque courses already, but they've done so much to it to make it look even better. Yeah, such a pleasure to be able to play here. And Paul has thrown a very nice backhand here. Skips All up. the way up, yeah. That'll be in the circle. And Kevin to go 50-50. Oh, yeah. Two sidearms, two backhands. Going to need a lot of flip. He might be getting it. Actually, I don't know. Did I think Eagle threw a forehand. I think he? so. Okay. Ooh, thank God. Wow. Oh, what an effort. Simon's on today. Mm, sit, sit, sit. Similar, very close from Kevin. This is the kind of putts wow. that Eagle hits, I think, more than any other player. That that awkward stance of that straddle doesn't affect him at all in his swing. And at, he could stand any direction he wa I mean, any way he wanted. And I think that as long as he could get that mm -hmm. full extension with his arm, he's going to give a good effort for the pin. That was a great putt from both Paul and Macbeth. Two I birdies, mean, two pars. And Eagle. Hole 7, par 4, 168 meters, 551 feet. Starting off in a tunnel going uphill. You'd like to throw a backhand here that finishes a little bit left. That's probably the ideal play. And you set yourself up for a straight shot down to the pin. It's kind of another tunnel that you have to hit. And then as we get down here to the basket, you'll see there's a pretty serious cliff just to the right. And this one last kind of cool looking tree that blocks a lot of shots. So speed control paramount here as you're coming into the screen. If you fly off that edge, you're going way down. Yeah, there's really no way to check up once you get past that mulch hill. Eagle early, knows it right out of his hand, kicking Ooh. left, but if that kicks far enough left, he might actually have some backdoor alleys for a big forehand. You'd much rather kick left than right. Oh, way, way much rather. Is that right, way much rather? No, it's not, but, okay, it, but I think people know what you mean. That's all right. And that is a big drive. That's a good spot. Off to the left does introduce a lot of rows of trees. If you can just keep this thing straight the whole way, it's that's definitely the best way to play the hole. But Simon also <laughs> kicks a little left, and we just got the official uh, count on the spectators. 1,200 spectators in attendance today on a Thursday. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Kevin, far right, grip locks that drive, kicks right, so he's in big trouble here. And really not even heading towards the hole. He's just kind of going up the hill to get mm -hmm. out. And that's a good play there. He didn't try to bite off too much and kind of counting his uh, counting his sheep here. I don't know what that means either. Gosh, what is happening? <laughs> the same thing. Counting his blessings. It's the thing, it's the thing we love, sheep. man. It's what we love. He's going to sleep. He's counting sheep, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, sometimes <laughs> you got to wake up out there. It's a major championship. It's time to get going. <laughs> oh, man. And Simon with the little forehand, like this, you were predicting, there was a, some room for that. If it, if this gets a good skip and is clean, this is going to get him in the putting range. And okay. It, and we've seen him already go yeah. for a couple crazy putts. That would be the craziest. That would definitely take the cake. He'll go for it. Eagle, this is in danger. Oh, see you later. Yeah, I think that's going to... Yeah, wow. That is way down the hill. And that actually can get pretty difficult to get up and down it from. absolutely can. He won't be in the water, but he'll be down there near the boats. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, after his uh, his approach shot, is going to have a putt inside the circle for his par. That's Fantastic. a good scramble. Look at this drive. A lot of little tiny gaps. Paul watching that zone skip down the hill. Oh, yeah. Just the perfection. What a... Uh, such a good throw. Oh, it looks like he's got a gap at least. And the running World's longest jump putt. Uh, oh. I think he'll be okay. 
He's going to have a tester, but I think mm-hmm. he's he's got a good chance to save. And that's going to be a putt for Bogey. Oh, luckily the angle yep. kind of set him mm-hmm. up. He didn't he didn't have to worry about the hill too much. I think Eagle is not really obstructed by this tree, but we will see. And a good bogey there. Yeah. I kind of just I haven't really noticed how well he's been playing, but he was six down. Or five down through six holes. Mm-hmm. And now he'll be four down through seven, but that's still a great start. Oh, no. Simon. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the more animated players able to smile and laugh at mistakes in a way that uh, is kind of fun. Few can. Yeah. In a way... <laughs> I think he's feeling the same thing that we're feeling when we miss those, but he just has a different way of showing mm-hmm. it. And I appreciate that. I do too. Hole 8, par 3, 88 meters, 289 feet uphill through a small gap, and then you've got a pin kind of perched on top of this little mound with the bark chips, so it's going to be pretty slippery for these guys to get up there and stick one close. Backhand mid-range is definitely the play if you've got it to go straight up the hill and slide right up to this pin, not a lot of sideways movement. Surprises is actually the second easiest hole in the course. I, I mean, it's straight. It's one of the. It's the, probably the shortest hole in the course. Actually, it must be. Mm-hmm. It just play. It pl- still plays longer but though because it's it, so uphill. So uphill, and the gap is pretty tight off the tee, and mm-hmm. and kicks can you know cause a bogey very quick, and especially with the basket on top of the mound, a miss putt can turn into a three putt just like that. So a lot of elements make this hole, I thought, somewhat difficult, but the field not not agreeing with me. Paul and Kevin with some great shots up the middle. Eagle with a slight mm-hmm. Anheuser release of the MD3. I couldn't tell if it faded back, but it looked to be tracking a bit right. It looks like it is just inside circle one. And this is going to go left. There's not a lot of not a lot of hope for good things over there. Yeah, and even though that's somewhat close to the circle's edge, it is a very obstructed putt. Don't roll. Okay. Sits down there nicely. Eagle. Big time birdie putt. McPato. (laughs) McPato. What is that coming from? I heard you say that a couple times. It's Peto's like beast or monster in in Finnish. In in Finnish. So I call him McPato when we're over here. I love it. Hole 9, par 3, 103 meters, 338 feet going downhill with OB on the right side. One thing to mention here about this hole, this is a test configuration for a new Mm. concept, multi-golf park. You're going to see as we get up close, there is a foot golf slash park golf hole underneath the basket. Park golf is played with a wiffle ball and like tiny golf clubs. It's a lot of fun, man. Foot golf is soccer ball. I've been playing around with it a lot since I've been over here. Yeah. It's a really cool concept. I think I get my hats off to try on something new. Yeah, hopefully we come into a, a small course near you somewhere. Paul going to go forehand. We have seen him ace this in the past. This is ultra wide, Ooh, which brings those trees power. in. Yeah, that brought those trees in. And it's kind of always a you're kind of gambling when you keep it that wide. You want to keep it inside tight, just like this one from Kevin. Kevin, during the President's Cup, actually got a oh, foot golf ace. He might get another. And he almost got another one. He was inside the hole. And for a brief moment on U-Disc, it had him actually as a, a one. <laughs> Players do get relief if you do fall in that hole. Don't worry. You don't got to stand down in there. You're going to take it just slightly back at the top rim of that cup. And Eagle throwing the softest hyzer he can even possibly throw. And he's long still, which is pretty much par for the course for him. Although I don't think he'll be taking a par here. Simon doesn't go forehand here. That really is surprising. This is such an incredibly technical flex shot. And he's absolutely got the forehand proficiency for this shot. Mm-hmm. I do not like that play, but, you know. 
Who am I to question Simon's success? Whoa. Good run. Little Another little finish lesson. McPato for this man. Eagle. That's Katka. Katka. That just means eagle. But that's what I call him when I'm over here. Kitos, Nate. Yeah, Kitos. Alahuva. Eagle. Birdie. Peto, par. And then par Same for the... Par and Kevin just slam dunking. Yep. He's got this hole in lock. Showcasing all the skills from the putter to the really accurate long distance forehand. Thank you guys so much for joining us to kind of spend some time with us here in Nokia, Finland at the Beast Course. Fantastic front nine from our feature group. We will, we will be right back to see them tackle the more open and more treacherous back nine. We're going to see some longer shots, some big pressure holes to see who can come out with the first round lead here at the first major of the year, the European Open. <laughs>